Good morning, students. Welcome to the fifth part of coordinate geometry. We have been discussing the distance formula, and in this section, we will discuss applications of this distance formula to triangles. As we have already seen, to calculate the distance between any two points on the coordinate plane, we have to use the distance formula. Suppose you take the points A, B, A coordinates are x1, y, x1, and y1. And coordinates of B are x2 and y2. And when you have to calculate the distance between these two, we use the formula which we call it as distance formula, which is square root over x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. So this is a generalized formula to calculate the distance between any two points on the coordinate plane. Now we'll apply this distance formula to triangles here. Now suppose you have a duck. And this duck is located at a point A in the coordinate plane. Now this duck is very hungry and it is in search of food. And suddenly it found a worm at a point B in the coordinate plane. So it has become mouth watering. And so it started traveling towards that worm and it ate that worm. Now how far did the duck travel? Yeah, it is from A to B. Now, how can you calculate the distance that the duck has traveled? By using the distance formula. Now, it suddenly has seen another worm at a point C in the coordinate plane. So, it has, it wanted to eat that also. So, it started traveling towards that worm and it ate that worm also. So, now to calculate the distance that he has traveled from B to C, now you have to use once again the distance formula. Then you will get the distance b to c then after eating that it has stomach full then it started moving towards its initial position suppose it is its home then it has traveled from c to a so it reached the point a how far did it travel so if you want to calculate the distance that it traveled from c to a once again we have to make use of the distance formula and we'll calculate the distance c a actually we have taken three different points on the coordinate plane and by joining these three points, we have actually formed a closed figure. And this figure is very well known to us. What is it called? Very good. It's called a triangle. So now, the line segments AB, BC and CA have become the sides of the triangle ABC. Now, we'll apply this distance formula to solve various problems involving triangles. So when you have this triangle, you will be asked questions like calculate the lengths of the sides of the triangle. So you have to calculate the lengths by using distance formula three times because you have three sides. Then as you know we have different types of triangles based on the lengths of the sides. So again after calculating the sides you have to tell which type of triangle is it. So you have to tell whether it is an equilateral triangle, if it is an isosceles triangle or if it is a scalene triangle. So to decide which type of triangle is it, first we have to calculate the lengths of the three sides. How do we calculate the lengths of the sides? Very good. By using the distance formula. So the distance from A to B has become length of the side here. Distance from B to C becomes length of the side BC and distance from C to A becomes length of the side CA. That is how we are going to apply this distance formula here. Now, as you know, in case of triangles, you will have three different cases. Case 1 in which all the three sides are equal and that means if you get distance from A to B, B to C, C to A and are equal, we say that all the three sides of the triangle are equal. And again you will have the second case, any two of the three sides are equal, then on, as the third case, no two sides are equal. That means all the three sides have different lengths. As we know, we have been we have been learning the sides of the triangle for, from very young ages like class 4 or 3. So if three sides of the triangle are equal, then what do we call the triangle as? Very good. It's called an equilateral triangle because all the sides are equal. Now if two sides are equal, then it is called an isosceles triangle. Then what is it called if all the three sides have different lengths? Exactly. It is called an scalene triangle. So if you want to tell which type of triangle is it, first you have to calculate the lengths of the three sides. 
if all the three sides are equal that means if you get all the three lengths equal then you have to say it is an equilateral triangle if any two of the three sides you get equal then you have to say it's a right isosceles triangle and if you get all the three sides different lengths then you have to say the triangle is an is a scalene triangle that is how we have to classify these triangles based on the lengths of the sides so here i have taken one example here which type of triangle is formed by joining the points a 91 b 105 and c 14 and 4 so we have taken three points on the coordinate plane namely a b c and you have to tell which type of triangle is it you have to tell if it is an equilateral triangle or an isosceles triangle or a scalene triangle as i had already discussed we have to find the lengths of the three sides so let us find length of the side ab so we have to consider two points a and b what are the coordinates of a 9 and 1 so we have to take this as x1 and this as y1 what are the coordinates of b 10 5 so we, if you take this as second point second point coordinates becomes x2 and y2 so you have to note down x1 y1 and x2 y2 then as usual we'll use the famous distance formula which states distance between any two points x1 y1 and x2 y2 is square root over x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square let us substitute the values x2 minus x1 now becomes 10 minus 9 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square becomes 5 minus 1 whole square as you know it's very simple subtract subtraction 10 minus 9 gives you 1 so it is 1 square and 5 minus 1 gives you 4 so it is 4 square so 1 square is 1 as you know and 4 square is 16 so we have got the length of the side ab as square root of 17 units now let us find the length of the other side what is the length of the other side you have to find bc now now we have to take b and c so b becomes x1 y1 and c becomes now x2 y2 so write their values x1 y1 now becomes 10 and 1 x2 y2 becomes 14 and 4 again you have to make use of the same formula x2 minus x1 becomes 14 minus 10 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square becomes 4 minus 5 whole square. It's a simple subtraction. 10 minus 14 minus 10 is 4, so it is 4 square. 4 minus 5 is negative 1, so it is minus 1 whole square. 4 square is 16 as usual. A square of a negative number is also positive, so 1 square is again 1. Again you have square root of 16 plus 1. 16 plus 1 is 17. so the distance from b to c which is the length of the side bc is now square root of 17 units now we'll calculate the third side here now we have to make use of c and a so c is the first point and a is the second point instead of finding c a you can find ac also it doesn't matter you will get the same value right now here c becomes x1 and y1 so x1 is 14 y1 is 4 x2 y2 is now a x2 is 9 and y2 is 1 once again we'll use a formula now x2 minus x1 becomes 9 minus 14 whole square y2 minus y1 whole square is 1 minus 4 whole square again 9 minus 4 is 14 is minus 5 so the first value becomes minus 5 whole square 1 minus 4 is minus 3 whole square pi square is 25 when you square a negative number you will again get positive so it is uh, it doesn't matter the sign so it is either pi square or minus pi square it is 25 only now you have minus 3 whole square which you will get sorry minus 3 whole square you will get 9 so when you add 25 and 9 you will get square root of 34 so we have found all the three sides of the triangle ab bc and ca we got these values ab is square root of 17 units bc is square root of 17 units and finally ca the third side is square root of 34 units then what did you observe from this the first thing you have to observe is how many sides of this triangle are equal how many sides of this triangle abc are equal here very good just by the simple observation we can tell two sides are equal what are the two sides which are equal here ab and bc third side is different as we discussed earlier as we know if a triangle has two sides equal in length then it is called an isosceles triangle so here we have got an isosceles triangle so by using the distance formula we can find lengths of the triangles then after finding the lengths of the triangles 
you have to classify it or you have to tell which type of triangle is it you have to tell whether it is an equilateral triangle or an isosceles triangle or a scalene triangle so simple just a simple application of the distance formula so we, we use this formula to calculate the distance between any two points when you have a closed figure the distances become lengths of the sides if it is a triangle you have to find the distances three times if you have a quadrilateral we have to make use of this formula four times to calculate the lengths of four different sides right now here you have a simple assignment find the lengths of the sides mentioned below of the triangle and you have to tell which type of triangle is this so if you get all the three sides equal you have to write triangle abc is an equilateral triangle or for pqr if you get two sides equal you have to write triangle pqr is an isosceles triangle or if you get all three sides different you have to write this triangle is an is a scalene triangle now in this next part we'll discuss applications of this formula to quadrilaterals so you have to classify the quadrilaterals into different categories we'll discuss that in the next class so you have to simply find the lengths of the three sides and tell which type of triangle is this i hope you understood this because it's very simple one of the simplest applications of this distance formula practice this solve these problems and post the answers soon thank you